Hello everybody, this is Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 Quick Match Gameplay. This time around we are playing as the Empire against the Vampire Count on the map, the Golden Colossus. This is a rather lengthy match and I am going to be spending most of the early game posturing and kind of trying to jockey for position with my opponent. So I'm going to go over uh, layout and uh, unit choice as we as with at full speed uh, most likely. So. For my lord, I did decide to run Volkmar the Greyman. I wanted to do a bit of a priest and a uh, bit of an almost crusading build, I guess, but a very priest-heavy build. So what I did, I did bring Volkmar the Grim, and uh, I actually brought him on his um, on his uh, good old alt on his war altar of, of the war altar of Sigmar. So this the war altar um, nerfs or nukes down his uh, uh, combat stats a lot, but it does bring up his speed a tiny bit. It does give him a hundred armor, which is rather significant, of course. And um, gives him fire, magical damage. Um, gives, but in general, just makes him a pretty pitiful combatant. But he does have a bit of splash. He can rampage through troops. He has a lot of mass. He's very hard to stop. And most importantly, it does give him a f two free casts of banishment, which is incredibly cool. Uh, definitely very nifty. It's an incredibly powerful spell, uh, in spite of the fact that it's a vortex. So definitely hoping to get some good usage out of it. Otherwise, he does have the usual priest spells. He does have Grand Hammer of Sigmar, which is an AOE uh, melee attack buff. Um, he does have Grand Shield of Faith, which is an AOE uh, damage re uh, reduction, and he does have Grand Soul Fire, which is a 90% magic resistance. And it's actually, as well as an AOE Marmot, it's actually a pretty cool spell, because if you cast it uh, on top of your troops, you can often deny things like Fate of Buna or Spirit Leech on Volkmar, or those sorts of things. And given that Manfred, for example, is a very popular lord, it could be pretty powerful. Alongside him, I did bring two Warrior Priests as my heroes, and both of these Warrior and oh, and I did forget to mention, I did bring the Jade Griffin, which is a pretty cool little trinket that does give you some, uh, re that gives you regen, which given that I didn't bring any regen units, or any roller of life, it's pretty good. Two Warrior Priests, um, and these guys have some pretty cool items and abilities, uh, they do of course have Benediction, just like uh, Volkmar, which is an AoE leadership buff, so pretty, uh, pretty awesome there. Hammer of Sigmar, which is, but theirs only affects them, uh, but it does boost their melee attack by uh, 26, which is pretty impressive, makes them much more competitive uh, close quarters combatants. Uh, we, and now I'm trying to posture here to counterattack counter my opponent's cavalry, but this is going to be a bit of a lengthy game and a bit of a lengthy kind of engagement here on the sides. The Warrior Priests also have the Grand Soul Fire, uh, though its uh, AoE is a little smaller, and they do have, or the Soul Fire, uh, with the smaller AoE, and they have Shield of Faith, uh, with I do believe it's actually the same AoE as uh, what Volkmar has, so it's pretty cool. They're uh, f rather... Their uh, melee defense and melee attack is a little low, but they do have fa fire damage, which can be pretty good against Undead, who often have uh, regen or... Uh, units that are susceptible to fire damage. Um, I do get a nice little volley here from my silver bullets into my opponent's blood knights. My opponent does decide to kind of pull away rather than engaging in the, uh, here into the middle of my troops. Now, behind, alongside that, alongside these priests, I did bring a front line make, composed of three units of great swords as well as three or uh, three units, well, five units of spearmen, two of which are covering the flanks. So the reason I brought spears is because they're cheap. And uh, against Undead, they're actually not bad. One of the cool things about the Warrior Priests is they actually imbue... They, have, they can get the um, Flaming Banner, so, uh, the Banner of Eternal Flame, which grants all the units around them fire damage, which is amazing against Undead. As I mentioned before, All undead or a lot of Undead have a region, and it's really good against them. And uh, it also gives you a little bit more greater weapon strength. Uh, with, it also gives you 6% greater weapon strength, which isn't much. It's about one point of damage, but still, every little bit counts, as I like to say. Um... So from the front line, I do have a mix of spearmen and greatswords, and uh, the greatswords are there to shut down enemy graveguard, which is really kind of the biggest threat for me, um, which is spearmen. And spearmen, while they're cheap, are actually more than capable of dealing with the majority of the chaff units uh, vampire counts can throw at them. The only chaff unit that will give them a bit of trouble, or cheaper unit that will give them a bit of trouble, is cryptocals. But against them, greatswords will be very, very effective, because they uh, have 95 armor, so they're very tanky. Um, Behind that, I do have a bit of a little bit of a firing line. I've postured, moved these spearmen and I had over here, over to this flank. So I've got two spearmen kind of overlapping here, covering each other. I do have the Royal of Griffites, who are of course the regiment of round, terror causing uh, griff uh, demi griffs, um, very high stats, very powerful anti large bonus, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and they're here to shut down enemy large. And uh, I was expecting flying lords so against that. Then I do have a whole bunch of shooting here, silver bullets, Slytherin's revenge. Um, they're obviously st stealth. They have stock, which makes them pretty uh, resilient against. Uh, kind of enemy, uh, a lot of enemy, just a lot of enemy abilities. Now, uh, for my opponent, he did bring an interesting kind of split army composition. On one hand, he does have um, the Red Duke, and on the other hand, 
he does have uh, with uh, his kind of cavalry contingent. Although he has a bunch of infantry. Here he does attempt to cast a wind of death. I'm not actually entirely sure if this was an overcast or single cast. My troops were very easily, nicely lined up for a wind of death, but <laughs> due to the fact that I was moving and uh, moved out of the way, it actually ended up whiffing completely. Now, opponent's front line is composed of mostly skeleton warriors with some skeleton spears on the flank and the sternmen kind of anchoring in the center. These guys are backed up, but they're very highly veteran up, and they are actually, as you can see, they actually have very high, decent melee stats for skeletons. And they're being backed by the corpse card with an unholy lodestone, which gives all these guys region and vigor mortis, which is plus five, five melee attack and melee defense, which is pretty awesome. Out on the flank, though, is my opponent's real like striking force two units of blood knights, um, two, two white kings with uh, potions of strength. And uh, the Red Duke himself, and of course the Red Duke does have El Seif. He's got uh, some pretty powerful abilities, pretty potent abilities of his own. And he, of course he's got spells. He's got Wind of Death, Invocation of Nag, and Raise Dead. Um, just a very pretty powerful lord. Finally, my opponent does have the Dire, dire Pack in here. He could kind of dash into my backline and just cut, cut, um, cause me some pain and uh, cause some havoc. So as you can see, things are finally starting to go down. Uh, it's been a bit of a long kind of bit of posturing. You can see my shots are going out from the uh, Silver Bullets and the... Uh, Sterling's Revenge going into the uh, White King, going into the uh, Dire Wolves. My opponent does throw the Dire Pack into my Royal Altar of Griffites, which is a pretty clever move, because the Royal Altar of Griffites um, lose their charge this way. Unfortunately, it does kind of blunt the charge from the Blood Knights a little bit as well, which is fortunate for my Royal Altar of Griffites. I also do pop my Grand Shield of Faith, which will reduce the damage these guys are taking. As you can see, Volkmar is just nuking the area around himself, just trying to do some damage. The spears are bogging down the Blood Knights. Blood Knights are very powerful against large, but they are not a particularly great unit against uh, at dealing with chaff, despite the fact that they have Frenzy and all that, that sort of stuff. Um, unfortunately, I'm definitely having a little bit of trouble getting the arc on my opponent's troops here. My Sterling's Revenger doesn't want to get a, sh get a shot, neither does this do the, my Silver Bullets, despite the fact that this, these uh, Blood Knights are taller. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kind of posture, get out on the flank. Over here, I do try to cast a Banishment, um, and my, unfortunately, my first Banishment did not go off. Uh, and this was a bit, a bit of a glitch, but uh, it did mean that I only got one banishment instead of two. And I do believe this is simply a glitch. Uh, you can see the banishment does a little bit of damage here. Uh, damage is my roll to figure fights a little bit. Uh, but there was definitely a bit of a miscast there, or a mistake there, because it uh, simply didn't go off. These blood knights are about to be massacred, though, thanks to the banishment in no small part. And uh, I'm post posturing my Sterling's Revenge as well as the Silver Bullets out on the flank to get some shots on these blood knights. Meantime, the front lines have clashed, and the warrior priests are in the thick of things. The great swords are in the thick of things. Uh, I'm popping grand, the uh, soul fire, the shield of faith, battle hammer of Sigmar. And all these things are making these guys much better, just cleaving through these skeleton spears in a very, very cost efficient manner. And the skeleton spears were not veteran up, unlike the skeleton warriors. Over here, in the meantime, my great swords have collapsed on my opponent's troops. Uh, unfortunately, my great priest over here has routed and is kind of fleeing and getting chopped up by the white kings. Uh, priests are not really meant to fight against. Um, other heroes. They're not they're not the greatest hero on hero unit. They're decent against mobs. Over here the so the silver bullets are just loading on the blood knights, despite the fact that my Demigriffs did route. They're down to five models. Over here my opponent did cast zombies and they went after my Sterling's Revenge, but this is not a good engagement. Sterling's Revenge actually have very, very, very respectable combat stats and close quarters. And they will dice these guys up. Honestly I've even had situations where Sterling's Revenge hold held its ground for a really long time against Graveguard. So zombies are not going to phase them at all. Uh, and there's actually some of these guys are still firing. You can see I've actually collapsed most of this this pocket here. I'm getting my warrior priest back, I'm getting my demi groups back, and I'm able to just keep shooting at my opponent while this front line is slowly but surely going in my favor. In the meantime, I have pulled Volkmar away because I don't want him going down to the Red Duke or his White King Goon squad. I'm just trying to surround these White, white Kings, get them surrounded by spears, and just kind of slowly but surely whittle them down. Over here with these heroic greatswords, we're holding up a bunch of skeleton warriors, the Sternsmen, as well as the uh, skeleton spears. And they're racking up some good damage. They are being buffed by that AoE from the uh, Warrior Priest, who does just plow in here. And uh, we'll start laying the hurt down on these guys. And he does pop a Grand Soul, uh, soul Fire here, uh, which will bombard these skeleton warriors, do a little bit of damage to them. Nothing too fancy, though, as you can see, it does a little bit of hurt. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm still not able to get a bead on these guys with the Sterling's Revenge. You can see, however, that I'm surrounding, so this is a very poor surround with the Greatswords, but I'm getting some good Grand Soul Fires, I'm getting, getting, I'm getting a bit of a surround, some of these units are starting to crumble, and uh, they're definitely starting to kind of fall apart. Over here, the Royal Dwarf Griffites have actually charged in on the White King, and they're actually laying the smack down on this guy. Royal Dwarf Griffites, with their bonus against large, which is, uh, I do believe, rather significant, and plus these guys do have four, they do have slightly boosted uh, weapon strength due to the proximity to the Priest. And uh, as you can see, they also are getting that ward save. These guys do actually have a respectable bonus against large at 28, which is more than respectable. It's pretty crazy. That's one of the better ones, uh, probably the best one for cavalry, because uh, Blood Knights have 22. 
So they're absolutely chopping through this White King on a horse very, very quickly with great ease, especially backed by these spears to soak up some of the hits. This White King over here does get disengage himself and or disentangle himself and goes after my Sterling's Wrench. But once again, Sterling's Wrench has pretty good melee, st melee defense. And this guy only has 34 melee attack, so he's actually got a lower than average chance of hitting these the Sterling's Revenge. Or lower than baseline, I guess. Over here, this random unit of zombies is just kind of sitting around for my opponent. And he's trying to kind of uh, lay the pressure down on my Warrior Priest with uh, the Red Duke, which is not a bad idea. These guys are definitely kind of helping hold my line up and uh, helping me just show some hurt. You can see another unit of zombies does go down. My opponent is definitely relying on these summons a fair bit. Over here, the Volkmar is kind of rampaging around. This poor unholy, this poor Horp Scar, once it gets surrounded, it's actually kind of a pretty bad day. Because from all the fire damage being imbued means that it's going to be taking 20% greater damage from all these units around it. Over here, Stone's Revenge is holding like a, like an absolute rock against Skeleton Spears, and the, actually, his Viking decides to think better of it and retreats. Over here, the uh, Royal Dark Pets have retreated once again, down to four models. Uh, they've been doing absolutely amazing job shutting down Blood Knights, Direwback, and uh, now Vikings. This Viking is actually pretty low. You can see this Warrior Priest is very low. He's retreating. Uh, and finally, I'm able to po position these uh, Silver Bullets into position uh, to shoot at the Sternsmen. This has been a huge issue this, through most of this game, has just been that my uh, Stern Silver Bullets and uh, Sterling's Revenge refuse to fire. They keep uh, claiming that they're obstructed. It often doesn't make sense. I think there has been, is a bit of a glitch, or perhaps some sort of, there is some sort of uh, error with targeting, because oftentimes, as you can see, these guys are not pushing really close for no reason, um, and there's really no justification for why these guys are pushing this close to shoot. Over here in the meantime, I do disentangle Volkmar, get a nice rear charge on these Skeleton Spears, just trying to make him collapse a little bit quicker. Um, obviously, the Stern Sterling's Revenge here is holding its own. Uh, they've all up to 133 kills. They're dicing through these guys. Some of them are actually still firing into the back of these Skeleton Warriors. Surely these guys will route. In the meantime, Red Duke and White King have kind of broken free, and uh, they're going to go after Volkmar, who's actually reached his healing cap almost. You can see the little line there is denoting how close he is to reaching his healing cap. Over here, Corpse Cart with Unholy Lodestone. He's going to have a rough time against all these fiery spears and uh, the great swords and all that sort of stuff. And you can see the Skeleton Warriors are collapsing, and with some of the rear fire coming in, the Sternsmen are in for a really bad day. Sternsmen are very tanky, as for the sh Silver Shields, they can actually do pretty well. But uh, with this much fire coming in from the Silver Bullets, they're in for a bad time. Over here, Sterling's Revenge unloading on the back of the Red Duke. Uh, great swords and uh, spears have almost brought down the Corpse Cart. And uh, Volkmar is just running, trying to stay alive, because my opponent is definitely trying to goon Volkmar here, just to cause a break. I do drop a bombardment here. Um, it's not really... I'm, uh, and with the Shield of Faith going down, I do have still have a Priest here. Um, I'm able to kind of keep this guy alive pretty effectively. You can see the last knight here, the last Royal Old Dwarf Grier fight. Last model is still in the fray, still fighting, still helped take out, they still helped take out that White King. And now my opponent is down to really his heroes. Volkmar has once again managed to extricate himself. Viking is now surrounded by great swords, and great swords, while they're not anti-large, with their armor piercing, they will still dice through this guy. Uh, and obviously, this lone courageous royal of fight is going to take this guy down uh, to avenge all his fallen comrades. <laughs> Over here, Red Duke is chasing after Volkmar. Volkmar has very bad stats when he's mounted on his uh, war altar, and he's almost at his healing cap, so he's in a very, very tough spot here. Um, but as long as he keeps running, he should be okay. You can see the Red Duke is getting surrounded by spears. I'm getting some silver bullets into position. Uh, as well as the uh, Sterling's Revenge. And I'm just trying to keep pathing Volkmar through my troops to keep running, just keep running, avoid a route. Over here, in the meantime, the uh, Royal Dwarf Griffin is still slugging it out. Hilariously enough, he actually did take a hit there, but he's still rather healthy. You can see my opponent's army finally does start to de uh, disintegrate. Uh, he does land a few last kind of spiteful hit there, and uh, the army does collapse after what was a very long, very hard for fought match. Uh, and uh, it ends with a victory for the uh, Crusaders, uh, for the Imperium, for the Empire. So, it was a bit of a fun game. Definitely was a bit interesting, the combat decided to run. As you can see, these these two Spearmen did go in with a point of veterancy into, uh, put into them. Um, but they did gain a second Chevron. Um, and that is because they fought some pretty high-end units. It shows just how good Spears can, Empire Spears can be um, against even a fairly high-end troops. Um... So quickly running through things, um, I had obviously did a mix of great swords and spears in the front. You can see not all of the spears performed great, but it's important to keep in mind that uh, these two spears, I, I, you can actually specifically, because I you know, when I deploy I'm fairly lazy and just kind of intermix units, and I know you can, it's actually fairly easy for me to keep track of which units are what. Um, these two spears and this spear unit fell back and they kind of dealt with the uh, White King and they, would de they helped deal with the um, Blood Knights and the Red Duke and all that sort of stuff. And then these two spears were fighting in the front line, obviously, against the garbage infantry. Uh, and as you can see, the great swords did amazing work. The um, Obviously, some of this is zombie kills, but nonetheless, it's very, very solid kill counts. Um, 
these guys gained chevrons. That's how much damage they were doing to the Viking and to the Red Duke and uh, the Blood Knights. The Blood Knights, as you can see, did not have a good time of it. So one of them did get 49 kills. One of them got, only got 9. This was against the Royal Dwarf Griffites. The entire pack got 1 kill on the Royal Dwarf Griffites. Uh, as you can see, the Royal Dwarf Griffites are absolute champions. They did amazing work. Uh, for my opponent, really, the Reliance and Skeleton Warriors, I think, definitely uh, came back to bite him in the rear because I was capable of shutting down his flank pressure with a s smaller, maybe similar investment. Um... Definitely smaller, actually, because he did convert all these blood knights while completely shutting down the front line. If it had just been the great swords, really, they would have basically been able to hold against most of these spears and skeletons pretty effectively. Only the sternsmen were really making a nasty breach, uh, because obviously empire infantry does not hold up that well against graveyard uh, for most part, except the great swords. And as you can see, two units of great swords did gain chevrons. Uh, these guys were not chevron up. Holtmar got some great bombardments, was doing a bunch of damage, just rampaging all over the place. The fire damage from the Warrior Priest, I think, was helping a little bit, or more specifically, I would say, the uh, AoE damage buff. Uh, and the Priests themselves were helping with their damage de their damage bu uh, debuffs, or I guess damage uh, resistance buffs, with their uh, AoE bombardments and all that sort of stuff. It's pretty effective against the squishy low end units that the Vampire Counts bring. Um, they themselves could dish out a little bit of hurt with their uh, when they buff themselves. Um, one of the two big problems I did have in that game. One was Volkmar's uh, banishment did not cast correctly. I'm not entirely sure why this is. It did consume the charge, but the charge did not go off. And um, this meant that I essentially went in and only got one charge. I only got half value out of... And that was really the main reason I brought the uh, wagon. The uh, Volkswagen, as some people like to call it. Because uh, it provides banishment. But I only got one charge, which was a little unfortunate. But it didn't change the game. It didn't decide how things went uh, in the long run. Uh, the other problem, I think, uh, was that I could was I don't know if it was a bit of a glitch or just some pathing issues or whatever, but my handguns and stolen range kept refusing to uh, open fire on the enemy troops, uh, claiming that they uh, the it was claiming that um, they're obstructed, and I, I'm not entirely sure why that was. I felt like a bit of a glitch. I don't because oftentimes they did have a very clear shot, but uh, it definitely made things a little difficult. Nonetheless, you can see these guys did a very good did a very good job of just chopping through the enemy. Uh, army with the Strong's revenge, revenge case and with melee, but also with just shooting, uh, decimating the enemy backline. Regardless, from my opponent, definitely his grave guard did well. Otherwise, it was a bit of a rough fight. I think he kind of just got drowned in uh, numbers of spears. Uh, and the great swords did some champion work. Volkmar did okay. And all in all, uh, the Royal of Griffites definitely punched well above the weight. So, good game to my opponent, OJM, over here. Um, had a lot of fun. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below so you keep up with additional content. Um, as usual, guys, I do appreciate you all for watching, and I will uh, see you all in the next one. Bye for now.